Think about it. If Jesus coming out of that tomb conquered death, hell, and the grave, any sickness, any affliction, what is that compared to what he's already conquered? The Lord said all things are possible to him that believeth. Only believe. That's all it takes for the mighty power in the blood of Jesus to go into operation for you. And it's already been demonstrated, recorded in the Word of God what the blood can do for a person. But it's up to you to decide to stand on those testimonies, to stand on the Word of God and let that mighty power in the blood work for your life. It doesn't matter what's going on. If Jesus conquered death, what sickness, what affliction is there that he cannot conquer? And I want you to rem remember a few things as I go through this sermon tonight. Number one, the work of God. The work of God, Jesus Christ. That was God's work for humanity. The divine blood sacrifice. And then number two, the sicknesses, the diseases, the afflictions, those are the works of Satan. The works of Satan. And Jesus came to destroy the works of Satan. Not just for the soul, but for the mind and for the body. And tonight the message is entitled, Healing is the Will of God. You know, many in the Christian world believe have faith that it's God's will for a person to be cleansed of all of their sins, to receive a born-again experience, to be made brand new on the inside by the power and the blood of Jesus. Yet these same Christians will struggle to believe, or in fact, maybe do not even believe, that it's God's will to heal a person to that same power in the blood of Jesus. But why is this? Because if the power in the blood of Jesus is strong enough to cleanse a person of all of their shame, guilt, condemnation, and sin, and make them brand new on the inside, spiritually brand new, is not the blood of Jesus strong enough to make your body whole and well? To cleanse and purify your body of sicknesses and diseases as it does for your soul? If people would take time to study the Word of God, they would know what God's will is for humanity, for soul, mind, and body. The life of Jesus was the perfect will of God in human form walking the earth. Jesus taught the will of the Heavenly Father. His ministry demonstrated God's will again and again and again. In fact, the four Gospels paint a clear picture of God's will for people so that they may go, view, study, understand, and let their faith be built and strengthened to receive the same for their life. Matthew chapter 8, verse 2. Behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, speaking of Jesus, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Now this leper knew Jesus possessed the power to cleanse him of leprosy. He may have seen other miracles, heard testimonies of other miracles and what Jesus had performed and did, However, he was ignorant to the will of God. Remember, Jesus had not yet died yet. His blood was not spilled. The New Testament had not been formed. The New Testament had not been purchased by the blood of Jesus. He did not have the written word to go to, to understand what God's will was. He was unsure if Jesus would heal him or not. Matthew chapter 8, verse 3. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. 
This example, this encounter in the Bible, if it was the only example of healing in all the four Gospels, it would be sufficient for any person to examine, study, and understand what God's will is for healing. That they may put their trust in God and His Son, Jesus Christ, and receive the same for their life. However, this is not the only example in the four Gospels. There are many examples in the verses of the New Testament and even the Old Testament confirming that healing is the will of God for humanity. 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. Behold, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. He compared the body with the soul. God's will is for your body to prosper in good health, just as your soul is to prosper in spiritual good health. As much as God wants to save you, He wants to heal you. Now remember this, the Bible tells us in the sixth chapter of 1 Corinthians that our body, children of God, our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And we definitely understand here in this Jesus ministry that it is not the will of God that divinity abide in a temple defiled and contaminated by sin and unrighteousness. Neither does divinity delight abiding in a temple that is afflicted with sin and sickness. A temple that does not operate as God intended it to. You see, God receives no glory from a life of sin and unrighteousness. Neither does he receive glory from a body that's sick and afflicted. God receives his glory when the blood of Jesus cleanses a soul of all sin, making them brand new. What a testimony they are. So too, God receives glory when the body is healed, delivered from sin, sickness, and affliction. That's when God receives glory. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, speaking of Jesus, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, Jesus gave a twofold atonement. He died on that tree that we may be free of sin to live a righteous, holy life. And he went to the whipping post for the healing of our body. Have you ever studied the suffering at the hands of the Romans at the whipping post? We're not talking the Jews. No, the Jews delivered Jesus to the Romans. The Romans' punishments were much more cruel and severe. The kind of beating Jesus took at the whipping post could have killed him. It did many in the past. But that beating he took, the flesh ripped from his back, bone exposed, the blood flowing, that price was paid for the healing of your body. Child of God, in faith you must stand upon the Word of God. Know what is rightfully yours as a divine heritage, paid for by Jesus Christ in His sufferings and death. Know without a doubt God will heal you. When a person refuses to believe that it is the will of God to be healed, that person is either ignorant to the Scriptures, or they simply do not want to believe God's Word. James chapter 1, verse 7, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, 
and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. No, God means what he says, and he says what he means. There's no variableness in God. Not even a shadow of turning. He's direct and he's straightforward. He says what he speaks shall come to pass because he's the Lord God Almighty. And truth declares every perfect gift and every good gift comes from God. Yet there are Christians who believe and confess that their sickness and disease came from God. That God afflicted them. But such believing contradicts the word of God. Contradicts the ministry of Christ. Is there such a thing as a perfect cancer? Or good heart disease? These are not gifts from God. These are works of Satan in the lives of people. Why? Because sin had, had contaminated and defiled the human race. Now, when you become sick or afflicted, that does not mean you're a sinner. Children of God can become sick and afflicted. But know your divine heritage through the blood of Jesus. The will of God is to be healed. The will of God is to be in good health. It was paid for by Jesus. Sickness and disease come from the devil, and the devil's works are anything but perfect. It says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. The will of God is for everyone oppressed of the devil to be set free. And sickness, disease, affliction, all of that is devil oppression of the body. So you don't have to remain sick and afflicted, O child of God. You can be made whole through the blood stripes of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Remember, sickness, disease, affliction is work of the devil. It's oppression the devil's oppression on your body. And what is the definition of oppression? Prolonged, cruel, or unjust treatment or control. Other words to describe oppression, cruelty, abuse, suffering, pain, misery, ill treatment, exploitation. Now, take those definitions and apply it to what we're speaking of that sickness and disease and affliction is oppression, the devil's oppression of the body. He seeks to exploit you, child of God, to keep you from having what God wants you to have. He treats you ill. He's cruel. He seeks to abuse the body. He hates the body. And if he can't get in your soul, he's going to try and afflict your body trying to cause you pain, suffering, and misery, when that is not the will of God. It's devil oppression. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament, God has revealed and demonstrated His will concerning healing and good health. For example, in Exodus 1526, it says, For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now, this is all before Calvary. This was to God's chosen people, Israel. But today, under grace, every child of God is one of his chosen people. God made a covenant of healing with Israel, his chosen people in the Old Testament. However, it was conditional. 
based on their obedience to Him. When God brought the nation of Israel out of Egyptian bondage, He healed everyone in need. Psalms, Psalm 105, verse 37, He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Feeble means weak. It does not mean sick. Weak, and that's, to me, significant. It's not saying there was not one sick one among them. It says there was not one weak one among them. Not even weak. Out of all those millions of people, everyone was strong. Everyone was healthy. Millions of people came out of Egyptian bondage, and not a weak one among them. The will of God. Exodus 23, 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. No sickness in the midst of the people as long as they serve the Lord. They wouldn't even become sick. There would be no sickness in their midst to make them sick. Again, this is all before Calvary. This is all under the law. How much more does grace abound through Jesus Christ and his spilled blood? For God's chosen people, his children, who are born again. Again and again, God confirms and stresses his will of good health and healing to Israel as long as they served him and obeyed him. It was conditional. And to point this out, I take you to Numbers chapter 21. Israel was traveling through the wilderness in God's will on the way to the promised land. At this point in time, however, they failed. They dishonored God by speaking against God and his servant Moses. And as a result, the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, afflicting and killing thousands. But when the people humbled themselves and repented, God forgave them, and he also provided a remedy. Numbers chapter 21, verses 8 and 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it on a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. That serpent of brass hanging on a tree was a type of Jesus to come, who also would hang on a tree and be cursed, foreshadowing the atonement of Christ for the sins and sicknesses of the human race. And those that looked, those that kept their eyes not on their affliction, not on the death and misery around them. Those that kept their eyes on the serpent of brass would live and be made well. When Jesus arrived, he identified himself as such. John chapter 3, verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. On the cross, Jesus was cursed for all the sin and sickness of the human race. And when the people in Moses' day looked and lived, looked upon the serpent, they lived. They were healed. And since Calvary, everyone who will look to Jesus and his blood sacrifice on the cross, believing, will be healed for soul, mind, and body. Keep your eyes on Jesus, not on what the doctors say, 
Keep your eyes on Jesus, not on your affliction, not on the pain. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Always, never take your eyes off Him. Now I want to take you to the book of Joshua, another Old Testament book, in chapter 14. There is a wonderful testimony of an elderly man whose name is Caleb, who lived an obedient life before the Lord. Now previously, when he was younger, he, with Joshua and ten other men, were sent by Moses to spy out the Promised Land. Upon returning, only Joshua and Caleb gave a good report. The other ten men gave an evil report. That evil report produced doubt, fear, and rebellion in the Israelites. And as a result, everyone twenty years and older were forbidden by God to enter into the Promised Land. Save Joshua and Caleb. Fast forward now. After 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, it is time for Israel to go in and claim the promised land. And in the process of doing so, claiming that land, Caleb, one of the two allowed to enter, gives testimony to Joshua of what the Lord had done for him. Joshua chapter 14, verses 10 and 11. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years. Even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. Now he's eighty-five. Here's the testimony. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Caleb gave testimony that he was as strong at the age of 85 years as he was at the age of 40 years when he went and spied out the land. Divine grace under the law. Grace unto the obedient. Caleb, being obedient before the Lord, received such fantastic grace. But it's a testimony of what God will do for his children who are obedient. And if such grace could be afforded to the obedient under the law, how much more grace will be afforded to children of God who are blood-washed and born new and obedient to His Word. Friend, do you understand that God has promised in His Word to renew the youth of a person? We so many times focus on healing, 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 but God, He'll even renew your youth. Psalm 103, 2 and 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. What are some of these benefits we are not to forget? Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Renewal of youth. Be it unto you according to your faith. All things are possible to him that believeth. Different writers of the Old Testament were given revelations by the Holy Spirit about Jesus Christ and his purpose to come. Psalms 107, verses 20 and 21 says, He sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Do you consider all of God's wonderful works towards humanity, towards you? Do you praise him and honor him and glorify him for it? 
continually. So many good works he does towards humanity. One of which is healing. Another, renewal of youth. Jesus was the Word made flesh, and he brought that healing and deliverance. Psalms 103, verses 2 and 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, all. Now, when you come to Calvary to receive forgiveness of sins, you don't go 50 times to get deliverance from 50 sins you committed. You go once to be free of all of your sins. So too, when you go before the Lord for healing for your body, don't go for one at a time. Go to be made whole, to be healed all over. Just as the blood will cleanse you of all of your sins, the blood will cleanse your body of all of your sickness, if you believe for it. In these verses, the twofold atonement at Calvary is recognized by the psalmist. Through Christ, God will forgive all of your sins. Through Christ, God will heal all of your sickness. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Here it is, healing for soul, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, healing for mind, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, healing for the body. With his stripes we are healed. Jesus paid a terrible price that you could be delivered in soul, mind, and body. Don't let his sufferings be in vain in your life. Let the price that Jesus paid benefit you and bless you. It is the will of God. Would God reserve healing from you after he allowed his only begotten son to be beaten to, almost to death at the whipping post? Why would he not heal you after he endured that terrible, terrible scene? God had the power to stop it, but he didn't because it was for a purpose, your healing, your deliverance. Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. To fear the name of the Lord is to honor it, respect it, and love it. Do you fear the name of the Lord? Because when you do, the Son of Righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. And under his wings you will find salvation for your soul, and healing for your body. In the four Gospels, Jesus ministered healing to people everywhere he went. You will find more recordings, more examples of Jesus ministering to the sick in body than he did ministering to those in need of salvation. It says in Matthew 9, 35, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Again, take note, Jesus demonstrated the perfect will of God by healing every sickness in every disease among the people in that day, in that society. But he did not heal every person. Jesus, now this proves, Jesus has all power, all authority over the works of the devil. 
But as long as man has free choice, he does not have all power over people. He is limited. And when Jesus went into his own hometown of Nazareth, the people doubted, and he could do no mighty works there. Throughout his ministry, the message was the same to people. Mark 9, 23. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. God does not promise healing to those who will not serve him. Healing is the children's bread. Now that doesn't mean God will not heal a sinner. If their faith goes into operation, God will heal them. But it's not promised to them. It's only promised to the children of God. Under the divine heritage of the New Testament. Purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ. So child of God, healing is the children's bread. That means healing is on the table for you. So take the whole loaf and be made whole. Don't limit God and settle for a few crumbs. Take all that you need. In the 13th chapter of Luke, there's a woman bound with crippling arthritis, bent over for 18 years. 18 years, she never stood straight. 18 years. Some of you haven't even lived that long. She was bent over that long. Jesus identified this crippling condition as the work of Satan. Satan's work. Luke 13, 16. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? God received no glory by that woman being bent over in that crippled condition. He received glory when she stood up straight, when she was liberated, set free from the oppression of the devil, from the work of Satan. Always remember, faith in God heals the sick. It is the will of God. Healing. He, God is the life giver. And not only that, but God has provided you the faith to believe what he has said. To believe in what he will do. Romans 12.3 says that God has provided every person, every person a measure of faith. So now it comes down to what are you going to do with your measure of faith? Your measure of faith may be in operation. You get prayer you don't receive. Well, maybe you need more measures. Because in different cases, there's required different measurements of faith needed. Are you going to believe God and His Word and stand on it, trusting it with all of your heart, expecting results? Or will you turn away from the Word, doubt God, doubt, give in to fear and worry and whatever else that would be a hindrance? Faith in God, faith in His Word. That's what heals. Man cannot heal. I cannot heal. Reverend Steve Millar cannot heal. No. Healing comes through Jesus. Operated, working on your behalf by your faith. In the fifth chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus heals a crippled man who had not walked in 38 years. John 5, 8 and 9. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. 
And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. Now this man heard the word of God. He believed it and he obeyed it. Jesus never touched him. It's not recorded. He touched him. He just gave him the word. 38 years never walking. He believed. And he proved it by going into action, obeying the word. He collected his bed, stood up for the first time. When you have faith in the word of God and you obey it, deliverance will come. Oh, it may take a little time, there may be a test of your faith, but deliverance sooner or later will come. If you believe and obey. The healing, the miracle, will be yours. Later, Jesus encountered this man, and he gave him a warning. In John 5, 14, Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. He was made whole. Everything. Everything that was wrong with him was gone now. Not just his legs, any other affliction, sickness in his body. Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. God's miracles and healings, his works are conditional. What you receive through obedience to God, you can lose through disobedience to God. What you receive through faith in God and his word, you can lose through doubt and fear. So if the devil comes around giving you false symptoms, if you're focused on symptoms, searching yourself for symptoms, looking for manifestations and works of the devil, the devil will be there to give you plenty of them. So you're either going to keep your eyes on Jesus, on the work he did on the cross, or you're going to go searching and looking for symptoms. And the devil's a thief and a robber, and anything that God gives you, he's going to try and rob you of it. Oh yeah, he'll test your faith too. Hoping you'll get your eyes off Jesus, and you'll sink, and he has you. Jesus declared, I do not speak of myself. I give you what my heavenly Father has given me to speak. And Jesus spoke and demonstrated in these scriptures in John chapter 5 that it is the will of God for people to be healed in body, to be made whole, that it is the will of God for people to be forgiven of their sins and to stay free from sin. But the power in the blood of Jesus, if it's strong enough to cleanse you of all of your sins, that power will keep you free from sin. In love, Jesus warned the man that if he did not stay free of sin, something worse would afflict him. Worse than being crippled for 38 years. You know, Jesus would never command that man to do something that he was unable to do. How cruel would that be? If he was unable to live free from sin and he would tell the man to live free from sin and if you don't, something worse is going to come upon you? No, Jesus is not like that. Jesus understood that the power in the blood that made the man to walk, that cleansed the man from his sin, would give him victory over sin and its dominion. Friend, listening to this message tonight, if you've had any doubts, any misgivings about the will of God concerning healing, about God's will and your case, hopefully by the scriptures I've shared with you, by reasoning with you in this message, you will understand. It will be clear to you now what God's will is, that you be healed, that you be set free. And if there is yet any doubt, all you have to do is look at Calvary. Go to Calvary yourself. 
See that demonstration of love, that great sacrifice made for you. But friend, healing for the body, it starts in the soul. Jesus wants to make you, to cleanse you and make you new, to deliver you from Satan's works on the inside. And he will deliver you from Satan's works in your body. Pray this prayer with me. Friend, the Lord, he lets us know in his word in the book of Romans that if we confess our sins, if we make our confession with the mouth, and we believe in our heart unto righteousness, God will move. That blood will work. It will go into operation for you. That price was paid for this very purpose. Make your confession now before the Lord by this prayer and believe what you say in your heart. Say, O oh God, I confess all of my sin before you. Forgive me, and I will serve you the rest of my life. And I believe the power in the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sin. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart, dear Jesus. And amen. And friend, according to the word of God that Peter wrote, you are now dead to sin. And now, through the power and the blood, you live unto righteousness. God's holiness and righteousness. All through the power and the blood. And that same power that does such a mighty work for your soul, let it do a mighty work for your body. The blood cleansed you of Satan's works in the soul. Now let the power and the blood cleanse you of Satan's works in your body. Be free in the blood name of Jesus. And Jesus, before he went away, he told his followers that a believer would lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall. No ifs, no buts. It's definite. No variableness. They shall recover. Friend, I'm the Lord's believer, Reverend Steve Millar, many believers here in our midst, coming together, agreeing with you in prayer. Many of you, you put your prayer request in the comments section already. If you can get to the screen, put your hand against mine on the screen. It's a form of laying on of hands. Heavenly Father, in the blood name of Jesus, we bring the people before you now. God, do move for their need. Oh Lord, you know what they have need of. But Lord, we come in faith, in faith believing your word, in faith believing the blood sacrifice Jesus made at the whipping post. God, touch them now. God, lay a healing hand upon them. And by the power and authority in the blood of Jesus, I curse all the works of Satan in their body. I curse every affliction in their body. God, you hate it just as you hate Satan. And that's why you sent Jesus to suffer, so that they could be free from the work of Satan in their body. Heal, heal, heal them, Lord, in the blood name of Jesus. And, O oh God, we'll give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. And amen. And, friend, you watch every sign of improvement and give God praise, honor, and glory. Make a covenant with the Lord that when he heals you, when he delivers you of Satan's work, you will be a testimony for his honor and glory in this final hour. But through the blood of Jesus, you have more yet to receive, that being the gift of the Holy Ghost. Friend, you can have God's gift. The third person of the Trinity, living and dwelling in your temple of clay. Remember, I gave you that scripture. Your body is to be the temple of the Holy Ghost that he lives and abides in for the honor and glory of God. That's God's gift to you through the blood of Jesus. The blood keeps on giving and giving and giving. And you, by faith, friend, it's time to receive. So before I call an anointing down to receive the Holy Ghost, those of you here in the auditorium, if you're in need of prayer at this time, go over to the side and I'll meet you over there to minister unto you. And settle your case before the Lord.
that when I lay hands on you according to the word of God, close the case and let the word go into action. Let the blood and its power go into action and move for your need to destroy the work of Satan in your body. And those of you standing there, sitting there, get up at this time, stand to your feet, come down to the altar, let the Holy Ghost anoint you tonight, let him bless you and make you a blessing, a greater blessing. And friend, those of you online, you don't have the Holy Ghost, wherever you are, living room, bedroom, it doesn't matter where you are, stand to your feet and lift up your hands unto the Lord because I'm going to call this anointing down upon you. And friend, when I do, just start praising the Lord even now, glorifying Jesus, lifting up praises unto Jesus. Keep glorifying him, praising Jesus, lifting up praise unto the Lord for he is worthy. And this anointing, it will anoint you in a mighty way. The Holy Ghost will move in where you're at. And friend, just open your heart's door and receive God's gift unto you. Because when the Holy Ghost comes in, when he comes into your body, your temple, he will take over your tongue. And he will speak in an unknown language. He will give the utterance. By his will, by his authority, he will speak. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring this people before you. God, anoint them to receive this gift from you. Anoint them to receive the Holy Ghost. I call the anointing down upon them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. Friend, lift up those praises unto the Lord. Tarry in his presence. Don't stop. Keep looking to Jesus. Keep looking to Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Fall in love with Jesus. Glorify Him and the Holy Ghost will come in. The Holy Ghost will come in. Let the Holy Ghost come in and baptize you tonight. Jesus, praise in the King. Yes, just yielding on over. Glorify in Jesus, glorify in the King. Praise in Jesus, love in Jesus, just yielding on over. Praise in the King. Glorify in Jesus, glorify in Jesus. Praise in Jesus. life for you just yield to his spirit he'll help you make it through look to Jesus look to Jesus there may be time you feel like giving up you tried the very best you could but it just wasn't enough there may be times when all you need is a friend you look around and no one cares and your heart is broken look to Jesus Jesus, look to 
Drive.